Get ready to elevate your holiday feast with my unique take on the classic green bean casserole. And the best part, no cans in sight. Hi, I'm Tara the Foodie and I take the mystery out of cooking for you. In today's episode, I'm ditching the cans and embracing the freshness of farm to table goodness in this no cans green bean casserole. Are you ready? I am. Let's get cooking. So to get started, we need to do a little prep work. And I think we've all made the traditional green bean casserole from the Campbell Soup Company, right? But what I wanna do is show you how to make this same casserole with more flavor, with whole ingredients, and nothing coming from a box or a can. First thing we wanna do, we have to prep a few things. We're gonna prep the onions first, and then we'll move on to the green beans and the mushrooms, which is gonna be a part of our homemade bechamel white sauce. Wait till you see that, it's gonna be amazing. Say bechamel. Bechamel. Because we aren't using any cans, we're gonna make our own French fried onions. Because of course, when you make green bean casserole, you have to have the French fried onions on top, right? So grab yourself a nice big onion, and then I'm just gonna slice this into thin slices. So once you've sliced your onions, the next step is you want to soak them in some buttermilk. So just grab yourself a, a deep bowl that the onions will fit in. And we're just going to go ahead and place the onions in this bowl and grab yourself some buttermilk, shake it up, and we're going to pour the buttermilk over the onions so that they're all coated. So thick and creamy and tangy, delicious. Toss them with your hands so that you can tell that they're all kind of down in there soaking. Now you can go ahead and set these onions aside and let them soak in this buttermilk while you get your flour ready. Just place a good amount of flour in the bowl that you think will cover the amount of onions that you have. And then we want to flavor that flour a bit. So we're just gonna hit it with some salt and pepper. Grab yourself just a fork so that you can stir your flour, salt, and pepper mixture together just to combine it. So in the meantime, you wanna make sure that you're heating up some oil. And I've got some light olive oil over here heating to 350 degrees. So our onions have been soaking in buttermilk for, I don't know, around 10 minutes or so. So we can go ahead and take these onions and our bowl of flour, salt, and pepper. And then what you wanna do is just, you can use tongs if you want to, or your hands like I like to do. <laughs> just grab some of the onions, let some of the buttermilk kind of drip off, and then place these in the bowl with the flour. And we're gonna do that until we get all of the onions into the bowl. Now, we're just gonna take our hands and toss these with the flour so that the flour coats all the different pieces of our onion. Get in there, baby. <laughs> Get in there. Mm -hmm. Just coat, toss and coat, toss and coat. So we've got our oil up to 350 degrees. We've got our onions dredged in the flour and buttermilk, salt and pepper. And now just take some tongs and, and just add your battered onions to the oil in batches. And also make sure that you've got Basically, you can just bring over your cutting board that you were using to cut your onions, like I did, and put a wire rack over top, and this will be perfect to drain your fried onions on. Just take little pieces and just sort of, I don't know, like get them in there. <laughs> See if you can break them apart a little bit, you know? And you only want to fry them to a golden brown, like a light golden brown. Because remember, these are gonna go in the oven on the top of your casserole, so you don't want them to be very dark. Mmm. Oh my gosh, it tastes just the same. That's good, and that tang from the buttermilk. I'm gonna go ahead and finish these onions up, get them all fried up, and I'll be right back. All right, my foodies, let's take a look at the finished onions here, looking delicious. And that's the color that you're going for, the 
just a real light golden brown. The French fried onions are done, looking delicious over there, and we really wanna keep eating them <laughs> so badly, but we won't. We're gonna go ahead and prep our green beans now. And you'll notice these are not canned green beans. These are the green beans that you're gonna get in the bulk section of the produce aisle at your grocery store. We wanna end up with around four to five cups of beans. I think this is about a pound and a half of beans that I got, probably too much, I don't know. But what you wanna do is you just wanna cut off the ends of these type of beans, just these little kind of uh, stem ends. So all I'm gonna do is line, line little bunches of them up and cut off the ends and then place them into this bowl. Be prepared for speed roll time. Speed roll time. <laughs> And go! Okay, so Juicy Joe and I finished the green beans. It was a pain in the ass. No. <laughs> It wasn't bad, especially if somebody's helping you. Well, this is, <laughs> let's, let's tell the viewers that this is the no cans. This is the no cans green bean casserole. So there's a little more prep work that needs to be done, but you can also buy fresh green beans that are cut already. I'm pretty sure they're in a package, just like you can buy onions that are cut up already for you and things like that. So if you're short on time, you can make those shortcuts for yourself. So now that we have our beans all prepped and ready to go, we're gonna go ahead and blanch them in boiling salted water for just a few minutes until they turn a nice bright green. All right, so our water is boiling, so we wanna make sure that we salt it to give the green beans some extra flavor. I'm using kosher salt, about like that, like a good amount. Add our green beans carefully to the boiling water. It's just been about three minutes, and as you can see, the green beans have, are a nice, bright green color and they are ready to be taken out of this boiling water. Yeah. <laughs> Walking through the mist. <laughs> Woo! And now we wanna prep our mushrooms. I'm just gonna clean these real quick, and so that they don't take on any extra moisture, I'm just gonna wipe off the visible dirt with a paper towel. So I'm gonna do that with the rest of the mushrooms now. One more funny face. <laughs> <laughs> So once you have your mushrooms cleaned off, now we're going to cut the ends off and then just put it flat and we're just going to cut it into slices. Thin slices. And just cut the end off so it's flat for you and thin slices. Now it's time to make our bechamel sauce. Woo. So we've got our pan heating up now. We are going to add two tablespoons of butter. And now we're gonna take our sliced mushrooms and add these to the pan. Push them right under the floor. There goes one. <laughs> Eat it, eat I'm it. I'm not eating it. <laughs> eat that mushroom. <laughs> Go ahead and stir your mushrooms to coat them all with your butter. Now you will notice when you saute mushrooms, they're like little sponges. So they've already pretty much soaked up this butter. So I always like to add some extra virgin olive oil as well. And it also adds a lovely flavor because you know, you're using the, the nice dark green 
extra virgin olive oil. So now you can see we've got all this liquid in here, right? This isn't just butter and olive oil. If you look, you can see it's water too. And even though we didn't even run those mushrooms under the water at all, they are now giving off the water that they were holding inside of them. So let this simmer on this medium high heat until all that liquid is gone. And then we will season it with the salt, pepper and garlic powder. All right, so after just a couple of minutes, if you come closer, you can see that all that we're left with now is really just the oil. You can see that the water is gone. And if I start to stir them, you can see they're starting to take on some nice golden brown color. So now is the time that we're gonna go ahead and add the seasoning. So just hit it with some salt, some pepper. I like to be pretty generous with the pepper. I feel like it gives it a lot of flavor. A little bit of garlic powder. I think I put it in everything, I feel like. And then we're just gonna stir it up. The next thing we're gonna do is add our roasted garlic. I roasted this garlic earlier today, so it would be ready for us. You just take a whole bulb of garlic, cut off the top, add olive oil and salt, and then close it up in a piece of tin foil, and then put it in the oven at about 375 degrees for about an hour, and it will turn into this. Now the fun thing is, you can take this, and it's nice and cooled off now. This whole bulb, we're gonna turn it over, and we're gonna squeeze it right into this pan. Yeah. Ready? <laughs> it just squeezes out. Oh yeah, <laughs> isn't that awesome? <laughs> just kind of help those cloves pop out. They're very sticky, they're very sweet, they're roasty, they're just so, so delicious. It's like, the closest to candy that, that uh, garlic can taste like, basically. And that's really it. And then you, you're left with just the skin for the most part. So it just kind of squeezes right out for you. It's really cool. <laughs> so you want to stir that into your nice browned mushrooms. And the smell is a little insane right now. And now, we are ready to add our flour. We've got two and a half tablespoons of flour here, and this is going to go into the pan with the mushrooms, which is then gonna help us thicken our sauce. And then I'm just gonna stir this flour into the mushrooms to coat them and to make sure that all the flour gets wet with the butter. We're cooking out the raw taste of the flour right now. And you can see the flour and the butter mixture has turned kind of a golden brown. And that means it's time to add our milk. I've got two and a half cups of milk here. I'm going to slowly add it to the pan and stir while I'm doing it. And you'll see it brings up the flour I can start to scrape that off the bottom of the pan. And you wanna stir it up a bit. You can see it thickening immediately because there's so much flour in there. Get it nice and creamy looking first, and that's when you add more milk. So now you see it's starting to turn to a real thick paste. You add more milk. And stir, stir, stir again. Real thick again, add more milk. This is how you make a nice, thick and creamy bechamel sauce. So now we've got all the milk in there. I've still got the temperature up to a medium high. We want to bring this mixture to a bubble and then we'll reduce the heat to low and stir it to let it thicken. Oh, I forgot to add one thing, the soy sauce. At this point, you want to add a teaspoon of soy sauce and I like to use the low sodium soy sauce when I can because it literally tastes the same and why not use the low sodium version, right? So I'm just gonna eyeball it and just put some soy sauce in. And that will add 
another layer of flavor and that umami that you're looking for in the sauce. So see what it looks like when it starts to bubble? It's like bubbling around the edges and you can see that it's thickening. So you just want to stir that and I'm going to now turn it down to low. And so as it reduces in temperature a bit more, it will thicken up more and it will turn into a nice sauce that we are going to pour over our green beans for this green bean casserole. We are almost there. Come over here and take a look at the thickness now after, I don't know, about five minutes, five, six minutes, you can see that it's a nice thick sauce. When you take your spoon and you go like that and it makes a path, that's where, that's the thickness that you're looking for. You want to taste your sauce at this point because you want to make sure that the seasonings are correct. It may need more salt and or pepper. So I'm going to go ahead and just get some of the sauce part. The garlic is crazy, like so good, like very roasty garlicky taste. Um, I can taste the mushrooms in there. It needs more salt. Those, those flavors need to be punched up and more pepper, I would say. So I'm going to go ahead and add some more salt here. And then some more pepper as well. And this, ooh, now I'm going to stir this up and taste it again. It tastes different now. And that's what salt does is it doesn't taste saltier now. It's just, oh, I can taste it more now, you know, it's hard to explain, but just all the different components that you want to taste in the sauce, you can just taste them more. And we are ready to finally assemble this casserole. All right, it's time to assemble our no cans green bean casserole. So the first thing we want to do is add the green beans. So just spread those out into your nine by 13 glass baking dish. Spatch is back to help us get the sauce out of this pan and into these beans. It is so garlicky smelling in here, isn't it, babe? Mm-hmm. So roasty garlicky. Oh, I love it. And then just kind of spread it over your green beans to evenly distribute it. And now we get to add these delicious French fried onions on top. They're so nice and crunchy, and I'm telling you, the key is to use this type of wire rack when you take them out of the oil because they stayed crispy, and they're going to crisp up even more in the oven. Now that I have all the components together to make this no-cans green bean casserole, I'm ready to put it in a 350-degree oven for about 20 minutes or until it's hot and bubbly. All right, it's time to take it out of the oven. Ooh, look at that, babe. Get that over here. <laughs> nice and bubbly. And here is my no cans green bean casserole. And now it's my favorite time of every video. Time to taste. I can't wait to dig into this garlicky, mushroomy green bean casserole. And it just, feels better to know that it was made entirely from scratch. I think over here looks good. A little square couple inches of it. There we go. Nice fresh green beans. We've got some crispy onions on top and some wonderfully flavored sauteed mushrooms, roasted garlic. And I am going to dig in and take a taste. Get a little bit. Everything on my fork. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mmm. It's so much better than the original kind that I've had in the past. All the components of this dish are fresh and crisp, tender, you know, but still there's a nice bite to the green beans. There's obviously a crunch to the French fried onions, as you could hear. And then the creamy, garlicky, mushroomy goodness of the homemade bechamel sauce. It just, it 
takes it over the top. It's so much better made homemade. If you go ahead and just put in that extra effort, you won't be sorry. This is the dish you must have on your Thanksgiving table this year. I'm Tara the Foodie, taking the mystery out of cooking for you, and I will see you next time. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. It's no cans green bean casserole, but we still have some cans. These are the only cans in this kitchen. These cans right here. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, my Jesus. Oh, I know. I think a little bit of that oil hit me. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. The hair stopped it. <laughs> God, girl, you're making a mess of this floor. I cook. Mm. I only ask for samples while cooking. I know, and, and kisses. Cooking, but and kisses and snuggles. And, yeah, samples and kisses <laughs> while being the cameraman. Yeah, I have to reapply my lipstick like three times during filming but this is not a problem. <laughs> I am not complaining. <laughs>